Hi guys and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the planning process for a digital portfolio. First of all what we're going to need to do is look at how we create what's known as a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart will allow us to plan our time and plan what tasks we have to do. So first of all we're going to open up Excel and we're going to jump into a new worksheet. What we need to do then is provide some text for our headings. So the task heading should be appropriate here. I'm then going to move along the row and we're going to set ourselves a time frame. In this instance I'm just going to put day one, then day two. Now we're going to go underneath our task heading and we're going to put in some of the tasks that we're likely to be doing inside of our project. So for example one of the first tasks we have to do is identify our target audience. As you can see here, when I've put in the information, it spans across two columns. When I make one of the cells beside it a different color, you can see that it makes it look very odd. What we can do is we move our mouse up to the top where we have our alphabeticalized columns, and we can hover between the two columns, and you'll see that our mouse cursor turns into something with a line in the middle of two arrows facing in opposite directions. If we click and hold our mouse, what we can do is we can drag that column to be larger than what we need it to be or smaller than what we want it to be. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm just making it large enough for my text. Now if you notice, what we've got here as well is when I select to columns C and D, we've got some text inside them that says day one and day two. If I select the two columns together and then double click on the column dividers, it will snap to the size of the data that's contained within it. And there you can see that it's making them slightly smaller. Now we're going to move on to being able to add further days to our timeline. As you can see here, we've, I've selected day one and day two. And then what I'm going to do is on the very bottom of that selection, you'll see there's a little square box. If we click and hold that and then drag it to the right, what happens is Excel will automatically place day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven inside of those cells for us automatically. And as we did earlier on, I'm just going to select all of the columns with all of the days in and double click in between the two columns to make the areas snap to the size of the cell. Now I'm going to return back to the tasks bar and I'm going to put in task two, task three, task four, just for illustration purposes, just to show you what it looks like inside. And again, as I've done with the day one, day two, I'm just going to select tasks four and five and then drag it down so that it populates down to 10 tasks. Next, we're going to use the paint bucket tool. Now, the paint bucket tool will allow us to fill in the colors inside of certain cells. What we're trying to do here is represent how much time we expect those tasks to take us. So I expect the identification of the target audience to only take one day, but task two might take me two days to do. So therefore, obviously, we've got day two and day three. If you notice, I can't start task two until task one has finished. So you can see there there is a slight drop in the line so that you can see that it cannot begin until one has finished. However, if we look through all of our tasks, task four and task five, both run at the same time. This is what's known as concurrency. It's a little bit like you being able to brush your teeth whilst you're in the shower. You can do two tasks at once. Next, we're gonna make sure that we've got some formatting inside of our table, just to make it look pretty. So we can click up onto the, the ribbon, and we can go inside the font section, and we can change the borders to be around every cell. Next, we're going to select the headings and the tasks. So we're going to select the heading row, and we're going to go up to our fonts area, and we're going to make that bold. And we're also going to make sure that the text is center aligned by clicking on center alignment. The next stage of our project plan, or planning of our project, will be to create what's known as a sitemap. For this, we're going to go inside of a Word document. The sitemap allows us to identify all of the pages that are going to appear inside of our digital portfolio and how they link to each other. 
Word has some great facilities inside it where if we click on insert, go to smart art, and then in the pop-up box, choose hierarchy, and then select the original organizational chart and click OK. As you can see from the image on the screen, the boxes are input for us. All we need to do is change the content inside them, add a few more, and that will show the structure of our website. So in order for us to do this, we're going to choose to change the layout first of all, and we're going to make sure that our page is landscape. This gives us a little bit more space in terms of width on our documentation. And the first one we're going to go and change is home or the first page. You'll notice as soon as I type any information inside of the box, the box resizes and so does the text just to make sure that it's fitting what we need it to do. I'm now going to delete this square here just so that we only have boxes underneath. And you might notice that we have three square boxes. I'm going to put about me in the first box. And the second box, I'm going to put in some information about my hobbies. Here you can see I'm adding boxes underneath. What we need to do as per the assignment request is we have to have eight pages. Obviously we only have three boxes. So in order to add a box, we're gonna click on our home page box, go up to our smart art design, and you'll notice that there's an option to add a shape. Make sure that we choose add shape below, and you can see here that it's automatically placed the box below our home page for us. Now if we're looking to go for merit criteria, what we need to do inside of our boxes is provide some information as to our file naming. This is going to give a bit more detailed information for us uh, to provide ourselves some guidance as to what our file names will be for our web pages. So you can see here that I've put the index page, about me page and hobbies page names in. Please note, Obviously in this video, it does capitalize the first letter of that text in index, but that should be a lowercase i inside of our index. Next, we're gonna move on to our storyboards. This is a very important stage because this will allow us to visually represent what our ideas are. So in order for us to do this, we're gonna just jump into whiteboard and we're gonna draw ourselves a square. Nice thing about Microsoft Whiteboard is it auto corrects on some of the shapes. So we're just going to add some more detail just to show that this is actually a browser window. So I'm putting in here the close button, the maximize and minimize buttons. And then I'm going to add some further details such as the back arrows and the forwards arrows for things like navigation on a web page. And then finally, I'm just going to add a little search box or the box where we type in our web addresses. And then that should be about it. Now notice underneath that is where we're going to be designing all of our web page information and identifying where we want to place certain things. As I'm clicking here, a little box with an X in it, this is going to represent an image. So I'm just going to put another label on that, a little arrow to come out of it to say that this is where my logo is going to go. Then underneath that, I'm going to be placing a long rectangle with lots of sections inside it. And this is going to be representative of my navigation bar. So again, I'm going to draw a little line off of it and put some information in to say nav bar. Now when we do this, we need to provide additional information. What we should be doing is it providing information to somebody else that could pick up our designs and implement them for us. So I'm going to add some information such as background colour. That is going to be green. Additionally to that, I'm going to add what sort of text color that I might be using and I think I might change this and go a bit wild and use something like black. Next I'm going to identify what font size I want to use for my navigation bar and I'm just going to say 16 size pixels and then I might also identify what sort of font that I'm going to use and in this instance I'm going to select Arial. Next I'm going to add another image onto my storyboard and this is going to be a big image and it's going to be an image of myself. So I'm going to just label that so it says images of, so it says image of me. 
and then below that I'm going to add a whole chunk of text. To illustrate this, what I'm doing is just drawing a square box with lots of wriggly lines to represent text. And I'm going to put a label on that. It says that this is going to be some text information about me. And as we did with our navigation bar at the top, we're just going to identify what the font's going to be. Uh, I'm going to choose Arial again. And also I'm going to identify what sort of colour the text is going to be. And I'm going to choose black again. Whilst we're labelling it up here, so we will don't forget to label things like the background colour of the actual web page itself. And here you can see I'm just going to put the background colour as being white. For some final detail inside of our storyboard, I'm just going to go up to where our bar for the, our URL is, and I'm just going to put in some additional information to identify what page this is going to be. So as you can see here, I'm just going to identify that this is our home page. 